Um, why don't we do this? Let's just begin. I'm going to open up in, in a short word of prayer, and then let's get right to the presentation. Um, we'll talk a little bit, and then uh, um, I'll answer some questions near the end, okay? Uh, well, Chanel, thank you so much. You're here from, uh, 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 from Brooklyn. Awesome. You can hear me well. Excellent. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Chanel, for the feedback. And let me just pray real quick, and then um, we'll kind of jump right to it. If, if you're on, wherever you're from, it'd be awesome just to kind of ha have you jump right in, and uh, it would be fantastic. So, Father, we just, we just thank you, God. All of us who are on this call, others uh, who were on on Thursday, God, all of us have been given this huge calling, Lord, and a huge responsibility to help grow your people and grow your church, God. And I just pray that, God, more than anything else, Lord, our hearts desire, Lord, God, would to always be to honor you, Lord, God, and to see you lifted up, Lord. So I just pray, cover us in everything that we're doing, Lord God. Cover our, our direction, leading God, guidance from you, God. And even give us wisdom, Lord, as we're looking through stuff that just uh, sometimes seems, oh Lord God, like it's difficult to accomplish, God, challenges that we're facing and growing the church and reaching people, God. And I pray that your wisdom will come and give us direction. So do what I pray. Cover us, Lord, anoint us, Lord God. Lead us and guide us in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Lorraine, thank you so much. You're from Fairfield, California. Awesome. So, so such an honor to have you guys on. Uh, and again, before I uh, start, just wanted to reiterate that this, the original intent of this was just really a re-recording of the um, webinar training that I did on uh, Thursday. I figured since I'm going to just take some time out to re-record, it'd be awesome to have you guys on. And uh, hopefully this these next 60 minutes will be a blessing to you. And you'll hear a couple of things that maybe will stretch you a little bit and challenge you a little bit. Uh, but hopefully we'll, we'll walk away doing ministry at a greater level. So once again, I want to welcome you guys to how to automate uh, your assimilation. Even if you're allergic to technology, at this point in time, you should be able to see my screen. And if you have any challenges seeing my screen, uh, just kind of let me know in the chat box and I will uh, just take a look and make sure you guys are okay. And so again, welcome to how to automate your assimilation, even if you are allergic to technology. And I wanted to just begin by letting you know, in order to see this uh, for your viewing pleasure, uh, one of the best things you can do is just kind of shut down any iTunes or any applications that might be in the background. Uh, that way, uh, this is being streamed live. And in that way, you will um, be able to get the best of viewing and also, just if you can put your phone on Do Not Disturb or shut the door, wherever you're at, if that's a possibility, it'd be awesome. That way, uh, we can just have a focused, concentrated time for the next 60 or so minutes. Um, at the end of our presentation, I'm going to just share with you a, a bonus. It's a special bonus, and it's one month of Convert Kit. Um, it's a free one month, and all, throughout the presentation, you'll be hearing me talk a little bit about Convert Kit. Um, it's one of the tools that I utilize to automate technology, to automate the follow-up process, and so you'll hear me talk about it a little bit. So just kind of tell me real quick. This is my opportunity to, to get to know a little bit about you and, and really my, my desire is to serve you. So the more I know about you, the better I'll be able to serve you. Um, but just kind of let me know real quick, uh, how easy is it for you to get first-time guests to take next steps? I mean, when you're, when you're thinking about uh, going from a service where people are raising their hands and indicating that they're first-time guests on a scale of 1 to 10, one being uh, super difficult, 10, it's a breeze. How easy is it for you to get first-time guests to take next steps? Whether those next steps are simply, um, you know, filling out a connection card or attending a membership class or maybe your small groups. Um, how easy, uh, Lorraine saying not easy at all. <laughs> I understand your pain. I understand the pain. Um, so how easy on a scale of one to 10, just kind of jot that in, just put it in the chat. And then, uh, on the next question is based on your number, whether it's one, whether it's a 10, what is one action you can take to connect more guests? So when we're talking about first time guests and we're talking about connecting, uh, more people, what is one action you can take? What, what's one thing you can do? to get people to go from 
hey, I'm sitting in the congregation or I'm sitting in the pews and I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm coming to that church to that's my church. What is one thing that we can do that just kind of helps us in that process? So if you can just put maybe one action item uh, that you can just type into the chat, just kind of gives me a little bit of feedback. And so I want you to know that you are in the right place if you struggle to get first-time guests to return your church. You are in the right place if you don't have a follow-up process. Right? So if you're thinking about your process and you're saying, well, we get people to come on Sunday, but I'm not really sure how to get them to come back on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Friday night. Uh, looking, if you're looking for processes to help you turn first-time guests into fully engaged members of your church. So if you're, if, if you're looking for a process that's going to help people go from, hey, this is the first time I'm coming to your church, all the way to, hey, I'm fully engaged, I'm a part of this church, then you are at the right place. You're at the right place if you're looking for a high-touch, high-quality follow-up system that's really on a shoestring budget. So if you don't really have the resources, the finances, but you want to make these high connections, you want to really get people coming to your church and attending and going from just attending to now belonging to your church, uh, you're in the right place. If you're a ministry leader and you're looking to automate your communication, then you're definitely in the right place. And if you want to just learn how technology can make you, uh, you more effective and more efficient, then you're definitely in the right place. And so I want to take a moment and introduce myself. My name is Pastor Ariel Nevis. Um, I am the founder of Thrive Church Coaching. I found Thrive about two years ago. And really, my, my desire behind Thrive has always been that I felt that I've been blessed to be in communities with pastors who've been doing things, excelling. And my desire has always been to be able to just sit, learn from them, and share with others. Uh, because at the end of the day, we're one body. And my desire is that all of us should be succeeding. We should all be seeing success. I'm also the discipleship pastor at Christ Tabernacle, which is pretty interesting to me because I, I started going to Christ Tabernacle a couple years ago, maybe about 20 years ago. I was 16 years old, had just made a commitment to Christ. Um, and as soon as I made a commitment to Christ, I remember it was it was about September I made a commitment to Christ. I turned 17 in October, and then that November I became a member of the church. But then it took me another two years to get involved, to actually get in ministry. And for the first year that I was at Christ Tabernacle, the only person that I knew was my cousin, who was the person who led me to the Lord. I kind of say he tricked me. Um, what he did was it was a Friday, a Saturday night, took me, we went to the movies. And that Saturday, he kind of said, hey, it's too late to take you home. Sunday morning, I can't take you home. I got to get to church. All of a sudden, I find myself in a church service, made a commitment to Christ. And uh, that's been about 20 years ago. And so... I'm in this church, it's about two years, and finally I start to get connected. And it just has me thinking about the experience that most people have, where they're in your church, but they're not quite connected. They're in the service, but they're not connecting with people. And the reality is people come to your church because of your preaching, but stay because of the relationships that they build. And so I became the discipleship pastor, and as soon as I, came, I became the discipleship pastor, our follow-up looked exactly like this. This was about seven years ago, and our follow-up was all phone calls. And so we would, we would specifically, the process was you made a commitment to Christ, and we would try to call you. The challenge was that we were only able to make calls one night out of the week because we, most of it was volunteer-driven. And, we didn't have, and because we didn't have enough volunteers, it was very difficult to make all the phone calls. So you could have made a commitment to Christ in the first week of the month, and you wouldn't get a call back from us for another two to three weeks because we just didn't have enough volunteers. And let alone, if you were a first-time guest, I'm sorry, but you didn't even hear from us. We, we, we took your information down, uh, but we never did anything with it. And so after some conversation with our uh, director of connections, uh, I kind of just said, hey, why don't we just try sending out an email? And so that, that was the first step in our, in our process for connecting with first-time guests, is that we would just send them a simple email. It just said, hey, thanks for showing up. And that, in essence, that was it. And then what we started to see is we were getting a ton of first-time visitors throughout the year. We were getting, we were averaging about 1,000 190 first-time visitors. 
But when we looked at our membership roster, only 2% of those first time visitors were becoming members. Only 2%. So we were averaging a little over 20 new members, 20 new members who actually were first time visitors or first time guests that year. And at the same time, I had hired a small groups coach. And uh, this small groups coach asked me this interesting question. He just said, hey, how long is someone attending your church before they become a member of your church? How long is someone sitting in your congregation, sitting listening to your sermons before they feel like they can connect or make a commitment to serve at the church? And the answer for us was three years. So someone was sitting in our church three years, hearing sermon after sermon after sermon, and yet not feeling compelled to connect. And that's when we started to make changes. That's when we decided, hey, we've got to be able to make some changes. We've got to make some adjustments. And that's so at the same time, about uh, two years ago, I started Thrive Church Coaching. And as a part of the process, I started to learn a little bit about content marketing. And some of the things that I learned that were pretty interesting was uh, some principles like the fact that it takes seven touches to build trust. It takes seven touches to build trust. And I realized, hey, that's also true for the church. Because here we are sending out one email to first-time guests thinking that that's all we needed to do and we weren't building any kind of trust. Another, another uh, principle is that consistent follow-up is super important. I'm learning this follow-up. I'm learning up follow-up follow -up principles in a secular area or a content marketing area where I'm learning from uh, these marketers and consistent follow-up is super important. That's when I realized that, again, one email or one phone call wasn't sufficient. It, it's, it's almost like saying to someone, hey, I love you so much, but I'm only going to call you once a month. I'm going to call you once a year. I'm going to just call you once and not follow up after that. The actions and the statements we were making just weren't lining up. And the other principle I learned is that you've got to automate your process so that you can really focus on adding value to your customers. And at the end of the day, our desire is to be able to add value to our first time guests. And so that's when I realized that these principles weren't just for content marketers, it's for us as a church. And truthfully, our content, what we're presenting is super, super important because we're not just selling a product. For many people, this is life or death. This is eternity is at stake. And so our content, the gospel, it's super important that we add principles that are effective that are going to help us to connect with first-time guests and help them to take the next steps that they need so that they can grow spiritually. So we can ha help people turn from first-time guests, turn them from first-time guests into fully engaged members. And so that leads us to today, how to automate your assimilation process. And so the agenda for today is I'm going to give you six steps for automating your follow-up. I'm going to introduce you to a class that I'm launching uh, either next week on automating your follow-up and uh, some Q&A that we're going to be able to do at the end of, the, of our time here together. Now, I'm going to take one quick moment. I just realized I did not great. That would have been a nightmare. So the six steps, uh, this is the agenda, the six steps for automating follow-up, like I mentioned, we'll introduce the class, and then we'll jump right into some Q&A at the end. So here are the six steps for automating your assimilation. Step number one is we're going to map out the process. So we're going to just look at the process, how your follow-up process or a, a, a suggested follow-up process. We're going to just map it up. That's step one. Step two, we're going to learn how to create content that connects with guests. We're going to learn how to create content that connects. Step three, we're going to build a system. Here I'm going to talk to you about the four tools that I utilize for follow-up. Step four, we're going to test the system because truthfully, uh, what we want to make sure is that, I love the saying, you, you never get a second chance at a first impression. And so we want to make sure that our follow-up and all the things we put in place actually work. Step five, we're going to feed the system. And then step six, we're going to delegate. We're going to delegate. All right, so let's get started. Step one, map out your process. So this is a, a layout of a 21-day follow-up plan that I, I came up and we started to um, put to, we started to actually utilize back in the beginning, January 2015. I put this together in January 2015, and we utilized it at Christ Tabernacle with some modifications. We don't do the handwritten notes, uh, but, but day one, we send out an email. Day five, we send out a second email. 
We send out a video greeting from our pastors. There's a secondary email. Then we, we actually send out a text message, and we usually do text messages as a reminder. Uh, I send out a third or, or at that point a fourth or fifth email, and then a robocall, uh, all pointing towards our, our meet and greet, which is usually day 21. And so let me give you three tips for mapping out your process. Here, here's tip number one. You want to start simple and then get fancy. Right, start simple and then get fancy. And here, here's what I mean. Start simple, just send out a couple of emails. Let's just start by sending emails. Trust me, there is a major difference between, hey, I went to that church and I didn't hear anything in comparison to I went to that church and I got four or five emails and I've got a pastor who's following up with, me, or I've got someone who's just encouraging me to take next steps. Do so you wanna start simple, then you can add fancy. So fancy equals maybe a video greeting, maybe handwritten notes, uh, maybe a robocall or a text message. And the reason I'm saying do fancy is because you want to start simple. You want to make sure that you're doing it consistently. Then you can challenge yourself and add some more complexities to it as you raise up more team members or you find more people to help you in the process. You understand the technology more. But just start simple. Just send out some emails. Tip number two is you got to have next steps. And what I mean by that is this follow-up process, whether you follow up for seven days, 21 days, or three months, has to lead to something. It's not just, it cannot just be, I'm going to send you an email after email after email without some sort of meeting point, greeting, or some sort of next step. And the thing is, uh, Pastor Andy, he's one of our uh, coaches here at Thrive. He says it all the time. You've got to learn to capitalize off of people's decisions. So what he means by that is, hey, if someone comes to your membership class, then that, there's a seriousness, but there's a soberness to them. Let's, let's, let's do whatever we can to help them take their next steps. And so that you want to capitalize off of people's decisions. So whether those decisions are a membership class or maybe those decisions are a meeting creed where people have an opportunity to meet some of the leaders or the deacons or the pastors of the church. Or maybe the next steps is a Bible study. We do a New Believers uh, um, Bible study, which is really all about the basics of the faith. And then maybe it's a small group or a life group, whatever you may call it. But the idea is that whenever you're mapping out your process, you've got a direction, you're heading, you're, you're leading the people to something. So it's not just, and that's something, yes, it can be Sunday, uh, but my preference is that it's something that takes them a step closer or deeper in your discipleship process. So it's not just on Sunday, but now they're attending something on a Tuesday or on a Wednesday or on a Thursday. So they're connecting deeper to the body life of the church. Tip number three is you want to add a human touch. And so when we're talking about uh, follow-up, a lot of what I'm referring to is automated in the sense that we're sending out emails via a computer and, and it just feels a little robotic. And so you've got to add human touch to it. And so some, of, some ways to add a human touch is even by the email address. So a lot of times I see that there are pastors, their, their, their emails or their connection pastors, their email addresses, connections at whatever the name of the church is. Well, I think it's, it's even more personal if you just put your name. If your email, if the email comes from pastor so-and-so, um, and obviously you can set it up that it's not your private email address, it's a secondary email address, so everyone doesn't have your private email address, but send it. Make sure that it has your name. It should say, you know, Pastor Ariel all over it, so people feel like they're connecting to a person. Because remember, people don't connect with organizations, they connect with people. And then obviously you can respond to any emails you get. Um, which is super important. So as we're doing a follow-up, we're getting emails and we're just hitting reply and responding to people. And it's just courtesy, just courtesy to respond to people. But when they hear from you, it feels like they're connecting to a person and it strengthens the, the probability that they're going to return a following Sunday. And then lastly, you can add a phone call. Make it a random phone call. But add phone calls. That way people feel, uh, you know, people feel like they're connecting with you. So that's step one. Step two is you want to create content that connects. And so what do you think is the number one most important aspect of your assimilation process? And so when I ask that, most people usually will respond to me, well, the announcement or the gift or um, 
you know, the, how, how we get people to raise their hands, the connection card. Um, but usually uh, when, I, when I talk to pastors and coaches, uh, the last thing that they're thinking about is understanding their audience. So you've got to understand your first time guests. You've got to understand the reasons that they're coming to your church and some of the struggles that they're going through and the things that they're they're the middle of, you know, some of the challenges that they're facing. Because in that way, when you're reaching out to them, whether it's email, phone call, you can utilize some of that as uh, opportunities to build bridges. Some of those challenges will help you to connect with them. And so an easy way to do that is to speak with some of your new members. So let me give you an example. Recently, about two years ago, I sat down with some of our new members. They had been members for maybe about a year or so. I just said, hey, what are some of the challenges? What, was, what made it difficult? Or uh, you know, what can we do to improve our connection process so you can feel, so people can connect even faster? And so they said, well, we came to the church, and our church is a pretty big church. Christ Tabernacle is a church of about 4,000 members. And they said, hey, we feel lost. We're not sure what our next steps are. We don't know what, you know, we're new to the church, but we don't know what next steps to take. We don't know how to become a member of the church. It's just not clear to us. And I understood that because part of the problem was that the name of our membership class was Christian Living 101, CL 101. And so that tells you it's just a class. And so when I, when I heard what they were saying to me, I said, okay, we've got to change the name. And so that's when we began this idea of getting started. So our membership class is literally called Getting Started. Because when you come to Christ Tabernacle, if you want to get started at Christ Tab, the first thing you've got to do is attend Getting Started. And so now when we make the announcement, everyone understands this is your clear next step. If you're not a member of this church, this is where you've got to go to become a member of the church. And so key to it is knowing your audience's pain points. What are their struggles? What are their challenges? What do they have to overcome to make it to your church? What are some of the challenges in their personal life and their work life, some of the difficulties that they're facing? And so when you begin, let me give you an example of identifying pain points. There's issues, for example, maybe unclear next steps. Uh, maybe they're unfamiliar with Bible. Maybe they're living common law. And as you get to hear these issues, you're going to start to hear, man, some of these issues are common. A lot of people are facing the issues. And so you want to start providing solutions for them. So unclear next steps. We're going to create, a, a, we're going to change the name of our member class to getting started. Unfamiliar with Bible. Anyone who's new, we're going to give you a simple devotional. So you can develop the habit of reading on a consistent basis. If you're living common law, then in our membership class, maybe we're going to have our marriage ministry there. We're going to give you an opportunity to sign up for a foundational marriage class. But the idea is that you understand their issues and realize that the easiest way, the easiest way for you to build connection with them is to provide solutions for their issues. And so here's a model for writing emails called pain, gain, and logic, because there are some people who make decisions based out of pain. Let me give you an example. Um, my TV is broken, so I'm going to go to Best Buy to buy a new TV. Right? There are some people who do not go to Best Buy to buy a new TV unless their TV is not working. Then there's gain. These are people who are going to get rid of the TV, go to Best Buy, and buy a new TV because it's a bigger model or has new technology. These are the people who are on the Apple line because the new iPhone is coming out. Right? It's all about gain. And then there's logic. And these are the kind of people in your congregation who are going to make a decision because they fully comprehend or understand the next steps. They understand what they're getting into. They understand the commitment. And so for them, you've got to lay this all out. So you've got to understand that there are some people who are going to take next steps because of pain, right? It's, it hurts too much to stay the same. Other people who are going to make take some next steps because of gain, because of the benefits, or because of logic, because they fully understand it. And so let's say, for example, you, you're sending out emails. These are you know, some of your first time of guest emails that you're sending out to connect to them. Let's say, for example, you want to invite your visitors to read their Bible. Here's how uh, pain would sound. All right, again, it's, it's the need to change because it hurts. It's too, it hurts too much to say the same. So your pain emails would sound a little something like this. Are you tired of making bad decisions? Struggling, uh, wrong job, wrong relationships, um, wrong friendships, 
I completely understand what you've been through. I've struggled too. And then you maybe go through a list of some of the ways you struggled, right? So at that point, you've built a relationship and you're connecting with people. Then you've got to help them take the next step. This is all an email. So after you finish saying, you know, I struggled with X, Y, and Z, but then, then there was a moment where I started to read the Bible. And I realized that the principles in the Bible were going to change the way I think. And so if you're like me and you used to struggle, you've been making all the wrong decisions, but you want to start making the right ones. Why don't you join us on Tuesday, February 23rd for our next Bible study? Or you can say, you know, or download this free devotional so you can start reading the Bible. The idea is that if you're inviting them to read the Bible, you want to challenge them to read, you want to start from their pain point and then help them understand that how reading the Bible is a solution to their pain point. So that's pain. The second model is gain. And so gain, again, is unpacking the benefits. And so this is where maybe the email starts off by saying, what if you can, what if you can hear directly from God about every decision you're going to make? What if God was going to actually show you, even before you made a decision, where, how to make that decision? What if God had a plan laid out for you and you can actually fully comprehend that plan? Well, it's easy to accomplish that. It's easy to uh, read or, or understand, receive that plan. And the way you do it is by reading your Bible. So if you don't fully understand how to read your Bible, join us at this Bible study. Or again, if you'd like to uh, develop the habit of reading your Bible on a daily basis, download this free devotional, you know, whatever the next steps are. But the idea is that gain is really about unpacking the benefits. And then lastly, it's logic. And logic is all about uh, helping people understand the steps that they need to take to accomplish the results that they're looking to accomplish. So a logic email may sound something like, hey, so excited for our next Bible study on Tuesday, February 23rd at 7 p.m. We're going to learn about X, Y, and Z. And so come prepared, bring your Bible, bring a pen, bring a pad, and we're so excited we will see you then. Um, and maybe you talk a little bit about the benefits of reading your Bible. You know, when you read your Bible consistently, you're going to gain wisdom. When you read your Bible consistently, you're going to hear the mind of God. You're going to hear the heart of God for you and your situation. You're lacking wisdom when you're making decisions for your family. Read the Bible and God will give you insight. So all of that is just example of the logic component. All right, so that's step two. Step two is creating content that connects with guests. And just so you know, in, in the class that we're going to uh, be unpacking, uh, the, the class that we're going to be doing starting next week, in this class, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the other methodologies. We're going to talk about subject lines also. And we're also going to talk about a, another model called the shepherd model. Uh, so there, there's a lot, a lot of insight or a lot of areas where we can learn on how to use content to connect with our guests. Step three is you've got to build the system. Okay, so at this point in time, you've, you've got first time, I just want to give you some context. You've got first time guests who come to your church, they're going to give you their card, and then you're going to start this follow-up process, right? So you've pre-written all the emails already, and then you've got to use these tools to build a system. And so here are the four tools that I use. The first, I start with video. So Vimeo is super important because it's, it's, it's got a free account. Um, and you can actually upload video and link your emails to those videos. So here's a, an image of our senior pastor, Michael Maria Durso, and this is the actual video that they shot. And so this is what it looks like in the emails. So this is probably one of the most, uh, I guess, read emails or watched emails because it's a video from our senior pastor and his wife. And people connect to video because they get to see your face, they hear your voice, and really they hear your heart. And so it's so easy. You can use an iPhone, uh, an iPhone just to shoot these kind of videos. And then you would just upload it to Vimeo. The other tool that we utilize is texting. And primarily, we use texting uh, primarily for reminders and or signing up for certain items. And really because texting at times feels uh, a bit too personal, like almost like we're invading their personal space. We use it sparingly. And obviously, depending on your connection card, you may or may not have their phone number. 
but this is where, where we utilize texting. Primarily, we use it after three weeks. So you've been following up with them for about two weeks. Hopefully, by that point, there's a relationship. And then week three, we're using it because we want to be able to connect with them or remind them of something. And then there's also robocalls. Uh, this is the program we use, Call Them All. And pretty interesting, I am actually not a major fan of robocalls because for some reason it just reminds me of slimy politicians who are doing everything they can to get my vote. And I'm not into politics or I'm not a politician, but um, it just always, every time I would get a call or, or the salespeople, I don't know if this happens to you, but I get a ton of those phone calls of, hey, you want a thousand dollar trip to Haiti or to Hawaii or wherever. And it's just like, really, this is a robocall. And I, I never was a fan of it until about a year ago. We did a baptism. And as uh, the Thursday before the baptism, matter of fact, it was around the Christmas time because uh, we normally we've done baptisms the first Sunday of the year. So around Christmas time, couldn't go into the office. So I recorded on my cell phone. I recorded the robocall. You actually dial in, leave your voicemail, and then, they, and then it saved into the system. It sent it out uh, to probably about 200 people. And so Sunday, Baptism Sunday, as I'm walking over to the sanctuary, uh, this individual comes to me. And he's just kind of excited. He's just like, hey, you know, thank you so much for the phone call. I'm just like, the phone what? I never called you. I, I, was, I was with the kids. We were unwrapping gifts. I never called you. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got this voicemail from you. Uh, you left the voicemail on my phone encouraging me to get baptized. And I'm here today because you left me that voicemail. So I wanted to thank you. I wanted to personally make sure I got to you and said thank you. And a part of me was just like, oh, my gosh, I cannot believe that I left this guy a voicemail using a robocall. And he actually responded to baptism because he felt like I personally called him. See, it wasn't a robocall like a robot. It actually was my voice being recorded, and he heard from me. And so, you know, I think robocalls are great if they're if they kind of give that personal touch, enough personal touch to help people make next steps. And in addition, you can use robocalls, again, to sign people up. So you've got people who can sign up for something. You can say, hey, if you'd like to get baptized at the 9 a.m., press 1. If you'd like to get baptized at the 11 a.m. service, press 2. Or if you'd like to get baptized at the 3, uh, at the 3 p.m. service, you know, press 3. And so they can just make decisions that way. And then the most important tool is email. And so as I've mentioned, I utilize ConvertKit uh, for email. And so... I'm going to step away from our uh, PowerPoint presentation and actually give you an opportunity to see what ConvertKit looks like. And I hope I do not break this presentation. So give me one second. Okay, so we're going to go to my browser, and I should have had that ready. So we're going to go to ConvertKit.com. I'm going to sign right in. And then we're going to go to my, so ConvertKit breaks things up into forms where people can sign up for stuff. You can actually host a form on your website. Courses, which is really a list of automatic emails. So if you look at this, these are uh, 21 emails. I mean, uh, it's the 21 day follow up. Now I've created this in my Thrive account. So it's not the way it would look on the, uh, our church accounts, a little different, but so all of these would all be emails that you would be seeing. Uh, they're pre-populated. So for example, right here where it says educational message, that's just the way it comes pre-populated. You can add as many emails as you like. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go to my 21 day follow-up plan. This is a, a booklet, a, a booklet that I've put together and I give as part of a bonus. That's a part of uh, the class that we'll talk about later on. And so let's go to this email. Okay, so the subject is help my family help my family thinks I'm losing my mind we're gonna just copy right into the subject line and here's oops here's the rest of the email and of course you you'll you would have to modify it so it include your information so these are what I would call swipe files right these are uh, emails that I've put together for follow-up you can just kind of copy and I'm showing you how to just copy it into ConvertKit and pretty much that's ConvertKit. I mean, it's 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 in there. Um, if you wanted to, you can maybe bold certain things so it stands out a little bit. So I'm going to hit the bold button. Um, 
And so if you had a 21-day follow-up plan going, so the, so let's say Sunday people sign up, Monday you input the names into the system, which I'll show you in a little bit. This would be the first email, day zero. This would be the first email that they would receive. You can easily swap this image out for another image. So I'm going to hit insert, choose, and this is a picture of one of my Pastor Andy, who's one of the coaches. Just using this as an example. This is that's how easy it is to just input an image into it. Now I don't own um, ConvertKit. This is just a tool, one of the tools that I utilize that I find to be super effective in the follow-up. And then you would take change the email status to published. You can preview the email before you send it out, so you can take a look at it. Um, and then you would just hit save all. Now I am not going to do that because I actually create an example. Uh, the last webinar, and I've got a ton of people who, if I did that, if I added that email, would be receiving an email from me right now, and I do not want to send an extra email. Uh, that would probably be a little frustrating to some of the uh, individuals. So this would be ConvertKit. This is ConvertKit. So that's the four tools. So step four is you've got to test the system. And as I, as I mentioned before, as I mentioned before, you can never uh, undo a uh, first impression. So here's how you test your forms. A form is simply this. So when you look at a website and you see like, you know, join the newsletter. So let's say instead of say it's saying join the newsletter, it could say, you know, sign up for our marriage class or whatever signups you want. And you just first name and email or name and email. You can change it. You can change the subscribe button. It can hit sign up. You can change it uh, however you like, uh, whatever you would want to change it to. But the idea is that when someone signs up here, Whatever those next steps are, whatever the email, make sure it's the proper one. So you want to test that. Uh, these are some of the settings behind it. Anytime someone signs up, you can send them to a certain page. So let's say they're signing up for a, a marriage class and you want to then direct them to sort of documents page where they can download the application for your marriage class. Or let's say they're a first time guest and it's the first time that they're on your website and you want to send them to a page that gives them a free devotional. So all of that, you would just be able to go in here and adjust. You want to test your automations. And this is super important because uh, one of the things that ConvertKit does is allows you to automate things. And, and, I, and I haven't done a good job of describing what automation is. But automation, in essence, is allow, it allows you to, pre, to do a lot of work up front, write the emails, create the system up front, and then set it on automatic so you don't have to keep touching it. So it minimizes the amount of human work required and takes over and allows the computer or the system to do the work for you, uh, which is super important when you're looking at your time, especially if you're a small church with small, uh, a small amount of volunteers or a limited amount of volunteers, doing as much work as possible on creating the system and then letting the system run itself is super important. So I use automation, for example, for signups. So I, I send out emails to, to first-time guests. Maybe the fifth email says, hey, by the way, we've got a membership class coming up in the next week or so. We'd love for you to sign up for it. Or if you'd like more information for the sign-up for information about our membership class, click here to register or click here for some clear next steps. It's automated, meaning the minute they click, they click that link, it automatically sends them to a thank you page or to a page with more information. And at the same time, it could start sending them a different set of emails that says, hey, now that you want to sign up for our membership class, let me show you what our membership class is about. Or let me show you the dates and times that are available so you can sign up. And it kind of automates that process for you. The next thing you want to test is your links, right? Whenever there's a link in an email, test it. I am infamous for sending out emails to my blog that ends up sending you to a uh, page not found. And so you want to test, 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 test as much as possible all of your links. Then you want to test your emails. And this, this is something I want us to just think about for a second, is that we have got, we're sending out emails to all of our first time guests, right? And so are people opening up those emails? Are people clicking? And if they're not, then that means that those emails aren't doing the job. So I would say maybe once a month or twice uh, or once every two months or once a quarter, the minimum once a quarter, you want to check your open rates. And are people actually opening up your emails? 
Because if they're not opening up the emails, there's something that's missing. Maybe it's the subject line that needs to be adjusted or something else needs to be adjusted, but it's worth taking a look at. And so one of the key principles is you want to build a little and then test it. Build a little, then test. Build a little, then test. Now here's step five. You want to feed the system. Okay, so feed the system. Step one, you collect the information cards. And so these are cards in your services, uh, whether it's name, email, cell phone number, you can add your logo to it. These are just, you know, just an example of uh, one of the cards that I've had previously designed. You can include that, have them, uh, it gets uh, entered into your membership. So step two is you would take those cards, enter it into your membership system or Excel, or however you're managing the list. Just do, do yourself a favor and do not just manage the cards separate. For example, you've got to enter them into some sort of system. Excel, minimum use Excel. I remember at one point, everything was cards. Everything was just by cards. And then we would lose a card. And when you lose a card, it's losing contact with a first-time guest. God has entrusted you with these first-time guests. Manage these connection cards with care. Make sure you're diligent in entering everything in. And I get sometimes the information is not accurate or you're guessing because you can't quite make out what someone wrote. That I completely understand. But do yourself a favor and do not just manage everything based on loose cards because you're going to lose a, a first-time guest card and regret it because you never followed up with an individual that God entrusted you with. So we use Fellowship One. You can enter into the system. Step three is once once you've got names into your Excel program or your membership, you can export it into Excel. And this is, in essence, what it would look like. Name, first name, email. I'm sorry, last name, first name, email. You know, and then, you know, you can import it. After that, step four, you would import into ConvertKit. And so in ConvertKit, there's an import button. You're going to just click the button. Then it's going to ask you to select the form. You can select first-time visitors. And then once you do that, it's ready. So let me just kind of take a moment and show you how quick and easy it is. So at this point in time, I'm stepping away again from uh, my program. Let's just make believe for a moment that... Uh, this here is an Excel file that has a list. It's an Excel file that has a list of emails and first names of those guests into ConvertKit and begin sending them emails. So literally, once someone's information is in Excel or in the membership class, I literally can follow up with them and start them on this follow-up process, and it would take me 10 minutes to do max. 10 minutes max. Now, I know a ton of pastors and churches, who their follow-up process is they sit in front of a computer and individually send out an email. So they're sending out emails for the next two to three hours because they've got 100 people. It's 100 emails, 100 times that they're hitting send in Outlook or Gmail. This way is a lot quicker, saves you time, and it sets it up where they're getting emails not just one time, but throughout their follow-up process, whether it's five emails, seven emails, or 100 emails, it, it's five minutes to set that up. Now, step six is the last step. That's to delegate. And so you want to delegate, right? So the, the idea behind any of this is that as maybe the pastors or the key leaders of your church, maybe the connection leaders or the discipleship pastor, the discipleship leaders of your church, one of the major responsibilities you have is to manage the system, not necessarily do the work in the system. And let me, let me phrase it this way. When you own a McDonald's, your job is to figure out how McDonald's should work, how the burger should get flipped. Now, I get sometimes you may pitch in, but you're not the person who's flipping the burgers. You're the person who's telling people how the burger should get flipped. You're creating the system. You're not necessarily always doing the work in the system. And so that's what delegating, documenting, and training is all about. And you want to make it so easy, and one of my favorite uh, commercials, so easy a caveman can do it. So you want to make this process so easy that any volunteer can do it, which means you want to take the challenge or the technology out of it. 
And so how do you do that? Well, easy. You got to create clear instructions. And so let me show you how to uh, create clear instructions. I use a program called Sweet Process. Now, you don't need Sweet Process. You can do it uh, using a Word document. And here's my process, step one. The first thing I do is I do it. Whenever I want something documented, I do it myself, and I build a checklist myself. Why? Because I want to make sure that it's done according to my standards. So I'm going to do it first, one time, and then I'm, and as I'm doing it, I'm creating the checklist. Then step two, I'm going to give a volunteer the checklist, and I'm going to ask them to test it and make suggestions. And the reason I do that is because, at least for myself, I know that my thinking can be a little abstract. I might write something down, but it doesn't mean the volunteer fully understands what I mean. And so I'm going to create this document, and then I'm going to have the volunteer look it over. So this is, for example, a document I created in Google Hangout, how to create a Google Hangout. What I love about a uh, process is that you see it automatically creates check boxes on the right-hand side. So if someone is working through it, they can just check it off. Step three. You want to incorporate suggestions. So whatever the, you gave it to your volunteer, whatever the suggestions are, you can then come back, uh, incorporate it, and then repeat the step, meaning update your system or update the documentation. And so the goal is to make it easy for people to understand and do. And so here's a tip. Don't complicate the instructions. Don't make it complicated. One of the easiest, way, easiest ways to make your, your instructions simple is keep the sentences short. If you keep the sentences short, then you know it's going to be simple and easy for people to understand. And because really, here's the premise behind delegating. How many of you know how to drive a car? How many of you know how to drive a car and understand how an engine works? So when I ask people if they know how to drive the car, most people raise their hand. When I ask them if they know how to make an engine work, a lot of hands go down. And so when what the premise is that you don't know necessarily how something, you don't need to know how something works in order for you to use it. You don't need to know how the engine works in a car for you to drive a car. And in the same way, you don't need to necessarily understand the fullness of how a system works for you to take full advantage of a system. You just need to know how to put the keys in and turn the ignition. You just need to know how to work the gas and the brakes. But you don't need to know how an engine takes gas and turns it into fuel or into energy. So the idea is when you create your system, keep it simple so that volunteers, they don't need to understand all of the details. They just need to know how to work the system. Here's the second thing when it comes to delegating. You want to develop teams to handle. So the two teams that you, in essence, need is you need a team on a Sunday who can enter your connection cards into your membership program or into Excel. And then the second team you need, or individuals, you need someone on Monday to then export from your membership class and import into your email program or your follow-up process. And so if you don't have any volunteers or you're short in regards to your resources, Fancy Hands is another great resource that you can utilize. Fancy Hands is simply a team of US-based assistants and you can utilize them to do whatever you want them to do as long as they can do it online. So if it's you want them to send emails, you want them to make phone calls, you want them to send faxes, as long as it does not require them to walking into your office, they can do it for you. You can get them to do about five tasks a month for about $15 which is really inexpensive, especially when you're thinking about the cost of hiring and then having to provide insurances and uh, you know 401ks and all those things. Fancy Hands helps you do it at a cheaper price. Again, I, I have no affiliation with Fancy Hands outside of it being a resource that I utilize and that I find to be effective for me and I think would be effective for you. So those are the six steps. All right, map out your process, create the content that connects, build the system, test the system, feed the system, and delegate. And so what do you think? At this point in time, do you think that you'd be able to uh, start following up, automating your follow-up? Or at least do you think you'd be able to put together a process that's going to help you take first-time guests and turn them into 
fully engaged members. So I'm not really sure why you showed up today, but I want to just take a couple of guesses. One, your assimilation process isn't connecting guests. You know you're doing something, but you're not, you just don't, you know you're not doing the right things because at the end of the day, the numbers aren't showing them. Or maybe you're intrigued at the idea of using technology. I've had a ton of people who've kind of come back to me and said, oh, wow, automating your simulation. Man, that would be awesome. They're, they're, they're interested in how to utilize technology to become more effective and efficient, how to get more done in less time. Or maybe you're just looking for strategies to help you grow your church, right? I mean, you, you know you have a passion to connect people to Christ, but you just need the plan to accompany your passion. Or maybe you're just tired of not getting the right results, right? So you said, when I, when I asked you on a scale of 1 to 10, how good are you on how, uh, getting first-time guests to take next steps? Maybe your number was a 5 or a 4 or a 3 or a 6. You just, you just know you're doing all the work, but you're not getting the expected results. It's frustrating. So I want you to know it's time. It's time for you to develop a follow-up system a follow-up process, an assimilation process that's automated and that's going to be effective and help you connect first-time guests. I want you to know it's your time. It's your time to create a follow-up system and an assimilation system that's going to help start to turn first-time guests into fully engaged members. And so I want you to remember nothing I've shared with you today is theory. I use these six steps every week to connect at least 40% of our guests and add at least 100 first-time guests as new members. Matter of fact, last year, we had 255 new members and 160 of them were first-time guests, meaning they were at our church, they were new members, and within that same year that they became members, they were also for, it was also their first time at our church. I want you to know I'm not extra special. And I don't have access to exclusive resources and tools. All I do is I have a system. And I have a system that works because for the last seven years, I've been working on the system, trying things, seeing what works, what doesn't work, and making adjustments. And if I can do this, I know you can do it too. So if you're ready and you want to know how to connect at least 20% of your first-time guests without feeling like a car, like a car salesman, right? that's how most of us feel. We feel like we've got to cajole people or we've got to uh, lead people on. And we know that it's good for them to connect to a church, but man, it's so difficult to get them to make that decision. If that's you and you want to know how to connect at least 20% of your first time guests, you want to just connect more guests and get them committed and get them walking for God, then I want to introduce you to my latest program. It's called Connect 1000 Guests. And here's the promise. I'm not promising you that you're going to get a thousand first time guests tomorrow. But I am promising you that you're going to create a system that's going to help you connect and process more first time guests. So that whether you get 10 guests on a weekend or 100 guests on a weekend, the system is scalable enough to help you connect as many first time guests as possible. Connect uh, 1000 1, guests is my A to Z blueprint for creating and delivering a high connecting follow-up system that builds massive trust, right? Because it's so important to build trust. People come to your church because they trust the pastors and they trust the leadership. So you can build massive trust with your first-time guests and turn your first-time guests into fully engaged members of your church. Because the reality is, it's great that you've got first-time guests coming into the building, but what you really want is them fully engaging into your services, into the ministries, taking next steps. Connect 1000 Guests is a brand new live five-week class. So I'm starting it live, and then after a little bit, I'll probably make it automated online. But for now, but for now, it's live online. Do you guys still hear me? Do you guys still hear me? I just saw a message that said that I, I might have lost. Do you hear me? Just want to make sure that I'm not losing anyone. Okay. 
Okay, awesome, Lawrence. You still hear me? Great. I didn't want you to. I don't want to lose you. Okay, great. So, Connect One Thousand Guests is a brand new live five week class. So, let me tell you a little bit about what's in the program, and then after this, we'll go into some Q and A. So, uh, originally, I had the class beginning Thursday, February eleventh, uh, but I, I'm going to reschedule our time and based on the fact that I had to re redo the recording, I may be beginning next week on the 18th of February, Thursday, February 18th. So our class will begin Thursday, February 18th at 3 p.m. And here's module one. We're gonna map your follow-up process. And so I gave you three tips today, but I'm gonna give you an extra seven. And in addition to the seven, I'm also going to give you a map or a template that you can utilize so that you can uh, create your own follow-up process. Again, it's so important to be able to see your process on paper so you can kind of visualize how one step connects to the other. Then module two is we're gonna be writing emails that connect with guests. Again, we talked about the pain, gain, and, and, and the logic um, model. Well, we're talking about another model called the Shepherd model. We're going to talk about subjects. We're going to talk about um, how to create, how to write stories. Just the idea is that you want to write emails that people want to read and that you connect with. You want them to feel like it's personal, like you're writing to a friend. Module number three, we're going to talk about building the system. And here's where I'm going to just kind of help you because I know that for so many people, technology, people are allergic to technology. Uh, people start sneezing when I start, I start talking about emails and, and all the robocalls and all those things. And so I'm going to hold your hand and help walk you through the system. Module four, we're going to talk about identifying visitors. Oh, so important. Uh, just a couple of days ago, I was talking to a pastor and he was telling me about his follow-up process and how he he's gets first-time guests into the building, but they're not handing their cards back and they're not uh, getting their first-time gift. And I said, you're, there's something wrong with your process. And I gave him a couple of suggestions because there's an easier way to collect cards uh, that's not going to require as much uh, from your visitor. And so we'll talk about that in module four. Module five, we're going to talk about delegating. And as I mentioned today, we're going to talk about creating checklists and uh, just uh, creating the system because as the leader, you're going to create the system. But what you want to do is be able to create it in such a way where your volunteers can take over. And so this is what, what's going to be in the actual program. You're going to get the complete assimilation system planner. It's 100% online. So we're going to be, we're going to be live online. It's a live training class. I'm gonna be providing you with 10 plus cheat sheets and checklists. So these cheat sheets will kind of give you uh, next steps. So it'll be kind of like, hey, step one, do this, step two, do that. Uh, and then checklists to make sure you've got all the right things in place so that your follow-up system is effective and it's connecting and you're growing. There's gonna be a members only private Facebook group. And it's the first time I'm doing this, but I'm really excited about this because my desire is to be able to interact with you on a daily basis. And so every single class will have some sort of next steps because our goal is to create a system. So at the end of the, the five classes, I want you to have your system working. But in order for that to happen, there will be some moments where I may give you an assignment. You'll be able to post on the Facebook group. I can look at it. I can give you some feedback, and I can do some follow-up. That way, it gives me an opportunity to really give you the input and the coaching that you're going to need to create the system together. So like as I mentioned, there are going to be some cheat sheets. Uh, they're going to just give you directions. Um, here's a first-time visitor follow-up cheat sheet. It's gonna, it kind of gives you all of the details you need, the scripting. So all of those are a part of the program. There's also, this is a bonus, is uh, the 21-day follow-up plan that I've created. I created a 21-day follow-up plan that we use at Christ Tabernacle, and it includes uh, the actual plan. It includes a, a bonus a video greeting where I talk about the tools you need to create a video greeting under $200. So if you've got an iPhone, you have got pretty much everything you need, just maybe a microphone, and you can actually go outside and do some lighting. I, create, I have a script that you can utilize to help you in case you're not sure what to say. I'm not sure about you, but most people, when they get in front of a camera, they start to get a little nervous, a little tense. Well, it's awesome if you have a script that's going to kind of help you tell you what you've got to say. I also provide some swipe files. 
So when we're talking about creating this 21-day follow-up plan or a, a, a automating our follow-up, uh, this is the basis for it is some of these emails. So if you're not sure where to start, at least you can start with some of the emails I'm providing you with. And then from there, if you want to, you can then update it. You can make some modifications to those, those emails. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, I, was men I mentioned about ConvertKit and providing a free month. And so my offer is that if you jump into the program today, I'm offering a uh, ConvertKit for one free month. And so it gives you an opportunity to sample ConvertKit. It's going to be on me. I'm paying for a ConvertKit for you. But the reason I want to do that is because I want you to try what I consider to be the best tool on the market. And so if you're ready to create your highly connecting follow-up system, uh, I wanted to share with you how to get, how to jump right into it. And so I know some of you right now are thinking, so what's the investment? What's this going to cost me? So the total value of the program is $1,200. That's the total value of the program. It includes uh, all of the classes, the live Facebook group, uh, the, the free, uh, uh, the Facebook, and that including the bonus of ConvertKit. But your investment for today, if you want to get started today, it's $59, followed up with three more monthly installments of $59. So today, you would pay $59, get your program. Next month, March, you would pay $59, and so on and so forth, two more months uh, to the program is paid in full. Or you can have a one-time payment of $189, and this is going to get you started in the program today. And so you can go to connect1kguest.com, connect1kguest.com, and that's where you'd be able to sign up for the program. And again, this is going to be uh, where I'll be able to follow up with you. We're going to have the Facebook program. Um, and so when you go to connect1kguest.com, the next step, once you click the link, you're going to go to a page that's going to have more description. As you scroll down, it's going to show you the two pricing plans. And so the most flexible plan, as I mentioned, is $59 today, and then three monthly payments following of $59, or the best value would be one time payment of $189, and that's where the savings of $47. And so once you do that, your final step, it takes you to an order page. You can enter information and just place, just press the place order now button. And once you hit the place order button, it's going to give you an opportunity to upgrade. And so here's what the upgrade is. And you do not, please do not ever feel any pressure to pick up the upgrade or to pick up anything at all. Uh, but I want to, I want you to know what I'm offering. So what the upgrade is, if you got to the point where you said, hey, I do, I, I love the class, but I, I do not want to get involved in technology. I want you to build it for me. So for the price of the class, plus the price of the upgrade, I would actually still give you full access to the class, everything we talked about, plus we would jump on the phone about three different times, and I would then create the system for you. Now, it's going to require me. It's a little more of an expense because it's going to require more time on my end. We're going to have to dialogue because I want to make sure that we get it right. I don't want to give, I don't want to do anything or deliver anything that's sloppy. So it means that it requires us interacting and dialoguing. And so that's the upgrade. And there's a, obviously a 30-day money-back guarantee. But here, here's, here's the guarantee, and I want to give this to you ahead of time so you are fully aware. If you do the work, you show me your results, and you're not satisfied, then I'm gonna, I'll gladly give you a refund. But the program only works if you do the work. The program's only going to be successful. It's only going to get you to where you want to get to if you put in the work. And so that's the total value of the full-time automation training. That's the bonus, uh, plus the 21-day follow-up plan. All of that is for a total of $1,200. But again, get started today for $59 for a payment plan or $189, a one-time payment plan, and you can go to connect1kguest.com. And so I know you may be thinking, hey, I, I, I really don't know where to start with this follow-up stuff. You said a lot of stuff about technology. Uh, I'm not even sure if I'm ready to get started. I want you to know that connecting first-time guests, turning them into fully engaged members is a major source of growing your church. You might be thinking, hey, I don't like any of this tech stuff. That's absolutely fine. That's, that's why I'm here. I'm going to help walk you through all the, the technical stuff. Listen, if you made it onto Google Chat, 
if you go to uh, Google Hangout, you can absolutely, absolutely get with any of these email programs. Plus, I'm going to provide you with cheat sheets and next steps and the Facebook group to be able to make sure that you are as coached up as possible. You may be thinking, I don't have the time. And that's, that is the reality. The reality is we're super busy. But that's why this is so important. Because when you automate the process, you're going to be able to get, when you automate the process, you're going to be able to get um, all the support that you need so that you can delegate it and have other people on board. And then you might just also be thinking, hey, I don't have enough volunteers. All right. Well, that's where we can help you outsource it. Or if you've just got one volunteer, they can do a lot of this processing for you. And so you might be also saying, hey, I wish I could afford it. And this is where I would say to you, hey, if you feel like you can't financially afford this, please send me an email, ariel at thrivechurchcoaching.com. Let me know, hey, I want to get in your program. I can't afford it. Let's talk. And I'd love to jump on the phone with you and we can dialogue because, again, my goal is to be able to support as many churches as possible. And so if you feel like this is way out of your price range, send me an email, ariel at thrivechurching.com, at thrivechurchcoaching.com, and I will be glad to help you. And so um, at this point in time, I'd love to jump into some of the Q&A. And so you can just, uh, if you'd like to uh, find out more information about the program, you can go to connect1kguest.com. And we'll be, di we'll be talking for about the next 14 minutes. Um, so what we'll do is because of the, uh, the amount, the limited amount of people who are on the call at this point in time, um, what I will do is I will absolutely take any questions. You just kind of throw, drop, uh, put your questions into the Q&A area. And while you do that, put your, your any questions you may have into the chat box, any questions you have about the follow-up process, any questions that you have about the, uh, the program itself. And at this point in time, I'm also going to be going through some of the questions that I've received in the past. Um, that way, you know, just in case if there's no, no questions, at least I've got a couple of questions, maybe it'll kind of get you thinking on, on a couple of things. So one of the questions that I got, um, was about how fast how fast does it take to actually follow up with people online you know like what's what's the actual time frame of it and so one of the things that I found is that um, a follow-up process takes what it takes and here's what I mean by that so the question the question was how long I lost the question how long Sorry, the question is, how long does the entire follow-up process take? So I, I, my preference would be to start with a 21-day follow-up process, meaning you're going to get seven touches within the 21 days. Seven touches within the 21 days. And the reason that I do that is because, again, going back to the concept that it takes seven touches to build trust. So let's work on building trust. So I stretch it out within 21 days. And the reason I do that is because I want to make sure that I don't overwhelm people. If I did seven touches in one week, that might be overwhelming. Uh, to me, that's synonymous as uh, proposing on the first date. You don't propose on the first date. That's a little bit on the crazy side. What you do is you date a little bit, and so you get to know each other. And so what the seven days, seven touches allows me to do is take 21 days, send out emails here, emails there to begin to create uh, points of touches or or points of connections with some of our guests. After those 21 days, I am encouraging them to go into some sort of next step. For us, the next step is a membership class. For other people, it can be a meet the pastor or, or greet, a meet and greet, or it can be a Bible study or a small group. Whatever it is, the point is your 21-day follow-up is ultimately pointing people to whatever that major next step is. Yes, it is pointing people towards your Sunday services, but it's also pointing them towards some of the next steps, the major next steps, because what we want is we want people to go beyond Sunday, and we want them to connect on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Fridays. In addition to the 21 days, the other follow-up happens if someone doesn't respond. So let's say there's no emails, no one's connecting at all then that would be something that I would do. I would connect with them 
um, let's say after the 21 days, they can get an email from us saying, hey, we haven't heard from you. We want to invite you to a major event or a special event. And maybe that happens once a month for once every two months after the initial 21 day process. Another, another question that I, um, another great question has to do with the actual emails. And so one of the most important things in your emails is the subject line. What I notice is when I'm looking at uh, churches, a lot of the subject lines say something like special event, or they say something like a weekly newsletter. And that's cool, but probably the most effective thing is making a promise in the subject. So maybe the an example of that might be something like, you know, um, how to make better decisions. Another subject, for example, that I used one time was um, change how to change the world from the comfort of your couch. And it had some great open rates because, in essence, the subject was giving an overview of what the email was about, and, and it was really saying to them, hey, this is how this email is going to benefit you. And so when you're thinking of your subject, you're going to, you want to think about the recipient and say, how is this email going to benefit them? What's the information in this email that's going to help them? And as you're thinking about that, then you can craft, from there you can craft your subject line. So another question that just kind of came in is in regards to the program. So yes, for absolute clarity, the program is five weeks. And so we would jump on a live call for the next five weeks. And in those five weeks, uh, we would jump on a live call for about an hour where I would send you a link, you would sign up. We would then from there have uh, some interactions and then I would provide some training, some cheat sheets. In addition to it, I also provide a membership site where as I'm recording those live calls, I'm going to post them onto those membership sites. The goal long term is for me to turn that membership site into a actual program that people can go in. So you'll have full access. You're going to have lifetime access to any of the updates that we put in, especially as we're discovering, we're learning new stuff. We want to make sure we're sharing it with you. So you're going to have full access to all of that. And then uh, uh, in addition to it, then there's the Facebook group. And what the Facebook group is, it's going to allow me to just kind of answer some questions and really have some sort of interactivity with you. And the interactivity is huge because that way I can make sure that I'm custom tailoring the program to fit your needs because I know what fits my needs, but I want to make sure I'm fitting your needs. And so that's where the Facebook interactivity comes into play. Um, super, super important. Text messages. That's, that's a great question. So the question is, um, how do we, how would we best recommend using text messages? So we use text messages in a couple of ways. Uh, let's just talk about members for now. So if ever there's a snowstorm or there's a reason we've got to cancel a service or uh, cancel something last minute, text messages is probably the best way to go because people are going to view your text message way before they view your email address. So that's, that's one usage. We use it as kind of like a communication point where we're going to say, hey, this is the most important thing we've got to communicate, or this is super important. We've got to make sure everybody gets this before 3 p.m. because we're closing the offices because of the inclement weather, weather. And so a text message will go out. But again, the downside of text messaging is the cost. It is expensive. And so how we use it for first-time guests is that we'll kind of use it uh, more of like, hey, so glad you did us. Um, by the way, you know, just a reminder, this upcoming Sunday is such and such such event. Or this Sunday is our next membership class. We'd love to see you there. Or do you would you like to um, register for our membership class? Click here. Or, you know, press one to register for our membership class. All of that is a part of the uh, uh, text messages. So we use it specifically in two ways. One is a, a medium for communicating with our congregation. And then two, we use it as a forum for people to sign up for events and for reminders for the event that they signed up. So uh, the question is about ConvertKit. Um, so the way ConvertKit kind of works is that ConvertKit is a program and it's 
pretty much um, you get charged based on the, the amount of subscribers you have. So if you've got a thousand visitors, there's a, a cost. Or if you've got a, th a thousand emails and ConvertKit, there's a cost per the thousand. If you get three thousand, ten thousand, as as your numbers go up, the cost does go up. Um, but regardless of whatever level you're at, whether it's uh, only a thousand or less than a thousand people, there's less than a thousand emails. All of the features are the same all the way throughout. And so the features are you can create forms. These are forms that you can actually enter onto your website, put name, put email, and you know, and then that way follow up that way. Um, you can create emails and it just be an email follow up system. Uh, you can also, um, so that's emails, you can also in ConvertKit um, do broadcast, meaning you're going to just send out one email to everybody. You can tag your visitors. So let's say you want to tag someone as a first time visitor. But then as they kind of become a member, you want to change their tag. And you can do you can create all of them. Matter of fact, you can automate all of it in the system. And uh, it's just it's it just makes follow-up super, super easy. And again, if there's anything that's effective, probably the only thing that's more effective in follow-up than email is a phone call. Um, or really a face-to-face, -face, then a phone call, then email. But the reality is as your church grows face-to-face -face and phone calls uh, begin to dwindle because you just can't call everybody. If you've got 20 or 30 first-time guests a week, how are you going to call everybody? It just becomes so challenging. You could bring in as many volunteers after a, a certain point, you're going to start to hit that plateau where we can only do so much. But emails, emails is a system, so it doesn't matter if it's five people or 500 people. It all is the same for emails. And so you can, at this point, you can go to connect1000guests.com, you know, and again, you can go to the sales page, take a look at uh, some of the information on the site. And again, $59 uh, will start the program, uh, $189 if you want a one-time payment. And again, if you're struggling financially or if your church just can't, if this is way out of your, your financial budget or it's something that you feel like, man, I want to do, but I just can't do, please, 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 please. Don't disqualify yourself. Send me an email, ariel at thrivechurchcoaching.com, ariel at thrivechurchcoaching.com, and then that way we can dialogue and we can maybe there are certain ways where I can provide some resources for you, I can help you out, but I want you not to disqualify yourself because of the price of the program. I want you to see the program as an, a tool that will uh, really help you to take your follow-up to the next level and in order for us to grow our churches, what we need is to take our follow-up to the next level. So another question I got was, what is the way that we collect our first-time uh, cards? So I walk you through that process in the Connect 1000 Guest course. Uh, but just to give you a quick overview, actually connect, collect all of the visitor cards in the service. So we do not wait for them to go afterwards. And the reason we do that is because what we have found is because of the layout of our building, our children's space is in one location, but our uh, visitor next steps and gifts are in a different location. And so people were uh, first time visitors would leave. We, we'd see people raise their hands. So we would have maybe about 10, 15 hands raised. Um, they, they'd raise their hands, but we didn't get it. We didn't get 10, 15 cards. So we knew that there was something in our process that was discouraging people from giving their cards back. And what we found was that when people were leaving the services, they were trying to get to their cars, or they had their children in the children's area. There was a ton of reasons why they could never make it to our information desk to pick up their first time visitor gift, or first time guest gift. And so what we did was we changed that process and we said, you know what? We're going to give them the gift in the service. And the reason for that is because it's going to minimize or it's going to increase the amount of connection cards. And, the, and that was the truth. The first month that we did it, we went from having about 100 first guests to 400 in one month. And primarily, 
because they were in the room already. They were in the room. Now, we had a sermon series about evangelism, but they were in the room. And because they were in the room, we were able to get them to submit the card there on the spot. And the second thing is, if you're not getting first-time guests, then you got to rev up your evangelism. You got to really challenge your congregation to invite people. And so pretty much those are all of the questions for now. If you've got any additional questions, please feel free to send me an email, ariel at thrivechurchcoaching.com. I'll be more than glad to answer any of the questions you've got. And again, you can check out the Connect 1000 guests at www.connect1000guests.com. That's www.connect 1000 guestscom and I would absolutely love to serve you in any way that I can. And I want to thank you one more time for spending the last hour, hour and a half with me. Um, I greatly appreciate your time. And my prayer is that your churches will begin to see the increase that you'll be able to see first time guests turning into full committed members, giving them, giving themselves completely over to the work of the Lord. And also, I'm praying your churches would thrive. If there's anything I can do, let me know. If there's anything I can do, let me know. And I will see you. Uh, if, there's any, if, there's, if there's anything I can do, please send me an email, ariel at thrivechurchcoaching.com. Thank you so much for spending this afternoon with me. May God bless you. Take care. Bye.